Welcome to our Mystery Sleep Stories channel, your sanctuary for meditation and a peaceful sleep. Immerse yourself in the soothing embrace of sleep-inducing tales, carefully crafted to transport you to mysterious lands. Let the gentle rain and serene sounds of nature accompany you on this quest for deep sleep. Say goodbye to restless nights and welcome the embrace of a restful sleep with our mystery bedtime stories. So, let the tale begin. The Ghost of the Bedouin Chapter 1 The Desert's Embrace On a cold, moonlit night, Princess Noor found herself lost in the vast, unforgiving desert. The biting wind and endless dunes stretched out before her, offering little hope of refuge. Each gust of wind seemed to sap the remaining warmth from her body, and her luxurious royal garments, designed more for palace comfort than desert survival, provided scant protection against the chill. She pulled her cloak tighter around her, trying to shield herself from the elements. Her horse, a faithful companion since childhood, was visibly exhausted, its steps faltering in the soft, shifting sands. The vastness of the desert was both awe-inspiring and terrifying. The dunes rolled endlessly, their peaks and valleys creating a disorienting landscape that seemed to play tricks on the eyes. The sky, a deep indigo scattered with stars, offered little guidance to Noor, who was used to the bustling corridors of her palace rather than the open, indifferent expanse of the wilderness. The silence was profound, broken only by the occasional howl of the wind and the soft crunch of sand underfoot. As she urged her horse to continue, Noor's thoughts wandered back to the events that had led her here. A series of misunderstandings and palace intrigues had driven her to seek solitude, a decision she now questioned with every bone-chilling gust. Her resolve was beginning to waver when, cresting a particularly high dune, she saw it, a faint, flickering light in the distance. At first, she thought it might be a mirage, a cruel trick of her weary mind. But as she focused, the light remained steady, a beacon of hope in the desolate landscape. With renewed determination, Noor guided her horse toward the light. Each step was a struggle against the yielding sand. But the promise of shelter and warmth spurred her on. As she drew closer, the outline of an ancient caravanserai emerged from the shadows, its walls weathered but intact. The structure stood like a sentinel in the desert, its presence both unexpected and reassuring. Noor dismounted and tethered her horse to a post near the entrance, whispering soothing words to calm the tired animal. She approached the large wooden doors, which creaked open with a slight push, the air inside was markedly different from the cold, biting wind outside. It was still and heavy, filled with the scent of aged wood and forgotten memories. The dim light cast eerie shadows on the walls, highlighting intricate carvings and tapestries that spoke of a time long past. Her footsteps echoed softly, as she ventured further into the caravan's rye, the only sound in the otherwise silent halls. She marveled at the craftsmanship around her, the detailed stonework, and the faded but still beautiful murals depicting scenes of desert life and ancient traditions. Each hallway seemed to lead to another, more mysterious chamber, filled with relics and artifacts that hinted at the stories of those who had once found refuge here. As she investigated, 
Noor's sensation of fear began to wane, replaced by a developing fascination. It was in one of these twisting tunnels that she stumbled across a huge room. The chamber was larger than the rest, its ceiling soaring high above with complex decorations etched into the stone. The area was dominated by a big, gorgeous table, covered in a thick coating of dust. Standing by the table was a figure, draped in traditional Bedouin attire. Noor's breath caught in her throat. The figure's presence was ethereal, almost translucent, and it seemed to glow faintly in the dim light. She could see the intricate patterns on his robes, the kind that her ancestors once wore, and the wisdom etched into his serene face. His eyes, though kind, held a sadness that seemed to span centuries. Noor took a cautious step forward, her heart pounding in her chest. Who are you? she asked, her voice barely above a whisper. The figure turned to her, his movements graceful and deliberate. I am Alim, he replied, his voice a soft echo in the stillness. I have been waiting for you, Princess Noor. His words sent a shiver down her spine. How did he know her name? Questions swirled in her mind, but before she could ask, Alan began to speak again, his voice weaving a tale of ancient times, of wisdom and betrayal, and of a curse that bound him to this place for eternity. Noor listened, captivated by his story, feeling a strange connection to this ghostly Bedouin and the mysteries of the desert night. Chapter 2 The Wise Bedouin's Tale The ghostly figure introduced himself as Alam, the spirit of a wise Bedouin who had been condemned to linger in the caravanserai for eternity. His voice, though soft, carried the weight of countless ages, resonating with a sadness that seemed to echo through time itself. Princess Noor captivated by the ethereal presence before her, felt an inexplicable connection to this ancient soul. Alam began to recount his tragic past, his voice weaving a tapestry of memories that transported Noor to a time long ago. He spoke of a flourishing desert tribe, a community bound by traditions, and a deep respect for the harsh yet beautiful land they called home. As their leader, Alim had been both revered and beloved, his wisdom guiding his people through the challenges of desert life. He was known for his fairness, his decisions always reflecting a careful balance of justice and compassion. Life in the desert was a constant struggle for existence, but under Alim's guidance, the tribe had thrived. They had established trading lines with adjacent tribes, their caravans filled with items that were swapped for rare resources. Alam's fame went far and wide, garnering him the admiration of allies and the envy of adversaries. However, the security and wealth of Alam's clan attracted not just admiration, but also avarice and betrayal. One one night, as the tribe celebrated a particularly successful trading season, calamity struck. Trusted allies revealed themselves as traitors, scheming with adversaries to overthrow Alim and grab control of the tribe's resources. The onslaught was rapid and savage, leaving the once thriving community in ruins. Alim fought valiantly to protect his people, but the betrayal cut deep. In the chaos, he was mortally wounded, his life slipping away as the flames of destruction consumed his home. With his dying breath, he vowed to protect his people, even in death. The gods, moved by his devotion, granted his wish, but with a cruel twist. Alam's spirit was bound to the caravanserai, a place of refuge turned prison, condemned to linger there for eternity. As Alam's tale unfolded, 
Noor listened with rapt attention, her heart heavy with empathy for the wise leader's plight. She could see the pain in his eyes, the weight of countless years spent in solitude and sorrow. His story was a testament to the cruel twists of fate and the enduring strength of the human spirit. When Alam spoke of his only hope for release, Noor felt a spark of determination ignite within her. He explained that a key lay hidden within the caravanserai, not a simple object, but a powerful symbol of unlocking the secrets buried in the sands of time. This key, Alam believed, was the key to his freedom, a way to break the curse that bound him to this lonely existence. The idea of a hidden key intrigued Noor. She imagined it as a relic of immense significance, perhaps an ancient artifact imbued with the magic of the desert. Alim described it as a beautifully crafted amulet, shimmering with an otherworldly light, a piece of history that had witnessed the rise and fall of empires. Its discovery would require not just physical effort, but also a deep understanding of the past, an unraveling of the mysteries that had ensnared Alam's soul. Moved by Alam's story and inspired by a feeling of responsibility, Noor swore to assist him find the key. Her decision was born out of compassion and an awareness of the shared humanity that bonded them across time. Despite the hurdles that remained ahead, she was resolved to relieve Alam's misery and restore his spirit to serenity. Alam's eyes glowed with gratitude as he looked at Noor. For the first time in centuries, he felt a glimmer of hope. Together, they would embark on a journey through the caravanserai, uncovering its hidden chambers and forgotten secrets. Noor's resolve to help Alam was unwavering, her heart set on liberating the wise Bedouin from his eternal prison. Noor had the unshakable sensation that this mission was much more than just finding the key as they ventured into the historic building. It was an opportunity to deeply connect with the past, explore human experience to the fullest, and learn about history. She was aware that the road ahead would be difficult, but she felt that with Alam's leadership and her own willpower, they could conquer any difficulty. What had once been a night of uncertainty and terror in the desert now carried the possibility of discovery and salvation. Chapter 3 Secrets of the Past Together, Noor and Alam embarked on a journey through the labyrinthine halls of the ancient caravanserai, their footsteps echoing through the silent corridors. The air was thick with history, and each room they entered seemed to whisper the tales of a bygone era. The walls were adorned with faded murals and intricate carvings, depicting scenes of desert life, trade caravans, and celestial bodies, all hinting at the rich heritage of Alam's people. Every find they made as they dug deeper into the caravans, Arai revealed previously undiscovered passageways and artifacts that provided insight into the past. A collection of old scrolls, their fragile paper brittle with age, filled one chamber. Noor unfolded a scroll delicately, and her eyes grew wide as she read the complex writing. The scrolls told the account of Alim's tribe's ascent to fame and the affluence they experienced under his sage guidance. They described partnerships formed and obstacles surmounted, creating a clear picture of a group of people united by custom and regard for one another. However, there were also darker tales of betrayal and envy weaved within these stories of wealth. Noor read about the sad chain of events that had culminated in Alim's betrayal with heavy heart. 
motivated by power and money. Trusted allies had joined forces with adversaries in a conspiracy. The attack night, the ensuing turmoil, and the fire that destroyed the village were all described in the scrolls. As Noor took in the horrific details, she could just hear the screams of agony and the clash of swords. The more Noor learned, the more she realized that this journey was as much about her own self-discovery as it was about freeing Alim. She saw reflections of her own struggles and challenges in the stories of Alim's tribe. The betrayal he faced resonated with her, reminding her of the palace intrigues and misunderstandings that had driven her into the desert. Through Alim's story, she began to understand the resilience and strength required to face adversity and the importance of wisdom and compassion in leadership. One fateful day, as they explored a particularly secluded wing of the caravanserai, Alim led Noor to a seemingly ordinary wall. With a knowing glance, he pressed a hidden mechanism, revealing a concealed room behind the false wall. The air inside was cooler, untouched by the desert winds that had worn down the rest of the structure. Noor's eyes adjusted to the dim light, and she saw a chest in the center of the room, its surface intricately carved with ancient symbols. With reverence, Noor approached the chest and lifted its heavy lid. Inside, she found a collection of intricate maps and artifacts, each item meticulously crafted and preserved. The maps depicted trade routes, oases, and the territories of various tribes, offering a glimpse into the expansive network that Alim's tribe had once navigated. Among the artifacts were beautifully crafted jewelry, ceremonial objects, and tools that spoke of a sophisticated and cultured society. But it was a single object that caught Noor's attention, a beautifully crafted amulet shimmering with an otherworldly light. Its design was intricate, the metalwork flawless, and at its center was a gemstone that seemed to pulse with a life of its own. Noor gently lifted the amulet from the chest, feeling a warmth emanate from it as she held it in her hands. Alam's eyes shone with recognition and hope as he looked at the amulet. This is the key we have been searching for, he said, his voice filled with a mixture of awe and relief. It holds the power to unlock the mysteries of the past, and ultimately, my freedom. Noor examined the amulet closely, sensing its significance. It was not just a key in the physical sense, but a symbol of the deep connections between past and present, knowledge and wisdom, freedom and destiny. She could feel the weight of its history and the potential it held for unlocking the secrets that had bound Alam's spirit. Chapter 4 The Release and Reprieve Noor and Alam headed to the center of the caravanserai, where a large, old altar was located, carrying the amulet. They had come to this particular place, where time itself appeared to have stopped during their voyage through the caravanserai. Crafted from a single block of alabaster, the altar was a stunning edifice, its symbols glowing dimly in the low light. It was evidence of the skill and profundity of Alam's people's spirituality. Noor approached the altar with reverence, feeling the weight of history and the significance of the moment. The amulet in her hand seemed to pulse with anticipation, its gemstone reflecting the flickering light. She glanced at Alim, whose ethereal form shimmered with a mixture of hope and solemnity. He nodded, his eyes filled with gratitude and a silent plea for release. 
taking a deep breath, Noor placed the amulet upon the altar. As soon as it touched the cool stone, a brilliant light began to emanate from it, spreading outwards in a wave of luminescence that filled the room. The carvings on the altar glowed brighter, the ancient symbols coming to life as if awakening from a long slumber. The light enveloped Alam, and his form began to glow and shimmer, the lines of his figure dissolving into the radiant energy. Alam's voice, filled with gratitude and relief, echoed through the chamber. Thank you, Princess Noor. Your bravery and compassion have freed me. You have restored my spirit and brought peace to my soul. Noor watched in awe as Alam's figure slowly dissolved into the light, his essence merging with the radiant energy that filled the room. The light grew even brighter, enveloping everything in a warm, comforting glow. Noor felt a profound sense of connection to Alam and his people, a bond that transcended time and space. She felt their wisdom and strength flow through her, a gift from the past that would guide her in the future. As the light began to fade, the room returned to its serene and silent state. Alam was gone, his spirit finally at peace. Noor stood alone in the grand chamber, a profound sense of accomplishment and understanding washing over her. She felt a deeper connection to the world and to herself, a newfound wisdom that had been forged through her journey. With the treasures and wisdom they had uncovered, Noor knew it was time to return home. She mounted her horse, which had been faithfully waiting outside the caravanserai, and began her journey back across the desert. The landscape that had once seemed so daunting now felt like a part of her, each dune and valley a reminder of the trials she had overcome and the knowledge she had gained. The journey back was filled with reflection. Nor thought about the ancient scrolls, the hidden chambers, and the stories of Alim's tribe. She pondered the lessons she had learned and how they would shape her reign. The desert, with its vastness and beauty, had become a symbol of the journey she had undertaken, a path that had led her to a deeper understanding of leadership, compassion, and resilience. Upon her return to the palace, Noor was greeted with a mixture of relief and curiosity. Her advisors and subjects could see the change in her, a new sense of purpose and calm that radiated from her presence. She shared the tale of her journey and the wisdom she had gained, recounting the story of Alim and the ancient caravanserai, the tale of Princess Noor and the ghost of the Bedouin spread far and wide, capturing the imagination of all who heard it. Noor's newfound knowledge and experiences shaped her reign, guiding her decisions and actions. She became a wise and just leader, her rulings tempered with the compassion and fairness that had characterized Alam's leadership. The ancient wisdom she had absorbed helped her navigate the complexities of court life and the challenges of governance. She implemented policies that promoted justice, harmony, and prosperity, earning the love and respect of her people. The legacy of Alam and his people lived on through Noor's actions and the stories she told. Generations to come would hear of the brave princess who had ventured into the desert, uncovered ancient secrets, and freed a wise spirit from an eternal curse. The caravanserai, once a lonely relic in the desert, became a symbol of hope and resilience, a reminder of the enduring power of wisdom and compassion. Noor's journey had not only liberated Alam, but it also transformed her, turning her into a beacon of hope and a source of inspiration for her kingdom. 
the tale of Princess Noor and the ghost of the Bedouin ensured that the legacy of the past would never be forgotten, and its lessons would continue to guide and inspire future generations. <laughs>